Today we're going to talk about why it's so important to measure your profit in Bitcoin rather than the US dollar. It's so intuitive to measure it in the US dollar because that's how we measure our purchasing power. Which by the way is a perfect example of why Bitcoin is not a currency because it cannot be used as a unit of account. You can't measure the value of things in Bitcoin because it's so volatile. There's that joke that goes around where a son asks his father for one Bitcoin for Christmas and the father responds $16,446 and then in the next sentence he says why do you need $15,750? The joke being that Bitcoin's price moves so rapidly that by the time he gets to the next sentence, it's a totally different value. So one of the very key functions of currencies, Bitcoin completely fails at. And it fails at a number, it fails at all of them, to be honest with you. But that's a video for a separate time. I know that was a lot to lay on in a video that's supposed to be instructional. But anyway, it's easy to measure your profits in US dollar, right? But you really need to measure them in Bitcoin and the reason you need to do this is because with any particular asset class which I guess we can classify cryptocurrencies as their own asset class at this point in time until it's a little bit more clear you need to measure it against a benchmark that is the standard of investing in any asset class that exists but it's especially true and probably the easiest way to understand it is with equities or stocks so with stocks, if you invest in large cap companies, you need to compare your returns against the S&P 500. It's plain and simple. And what you'll find is that the majority of funds actually underperform the S&P 500, especially once we get into the longer term here. You can see 80% of large cap funds actually underperform the S&P 500. And you can see here that it's true in Canada, you can see it's true in Mexico, although this is actually a surprisingly low statistic. You can see it's true in Brazil, and so on and so forth. You'll find that it's exceptionally true in developed countries because the markets tend to be a lot more efficient in these places. But it's worth noting as well that even if we go into all of the different segments out there, if we look at mid caps, if we look at small caps, if we look at multi caps, if we look at almost anything out there, you will find that across the board, wealth managers actually underperform the relevant benchmark. That's how you need to evaluate your returns. That's how you need to evaluate whether or not you're a good wealth manager. If you outperform Bitcoin with your altcoins, if you're not outperforming Bitcoin, you're a poor wealth manager. Now, there is an exception to this, and that is if you adjust for risk. If you adjust for risk and still have a higher return than Bitcoin, then you're generating alpha. But this is beyond the scope of this video, and it's also beyond the scope of most people's ability to understand it. But the simple way of thinking about it is that you should think of, I should want to maximize my return per unit of risk. And there's different ways to measure risk. You can measure it by standard deviation. You can measure it by beta. You can measure it by volatility. Bitcoin at the moment, we don't have a liquid options market, so there's no implied volatility to work off of, unfortunately, which means that you do have to, I would say most of the ways to measure volatility with Bitcoin at the moment are not the greatest so it's very difficult to figure out what the risk adjustment factor would be probably standard deviation is the best factor we could go by for anybody that's actually interested in that sort of thing but the point of this is your return should always be measured against bitcoin anybody could make money in the u.s dollar by investing in this market at the moment because it's just gone straight up plain and simple but you really need to measure it against bitcoin and to really put that into perspective here I'm gonna try to give an update to my last video as to why looking at Satoshi levels is so important because a lot of you commented on my last video that I should use the US dollar as well or in replacement of the Satoshi levels and you can see that across the board here so the problem with that is that Satoshi levels actually vary in US dollar levels in other words there are going to be times where you know ethereum is at four million satoshi and it's actually worth less than what it is now in u.s dollar terms it can be worth way more 
than what it's worth now in US dollar terms. And the easiest way to think about this is if you look at the long term chart for Ethereum, you can see that in Satoshi level it's actually gone down quite a bit. But if you look at the US dollar level, you'll find that it's done nothing but go straight up. So I hope that makes it clear in a very visual way why these things are completely different and you can't replace the two. They are not substitutes for one another. They are complete different beast because Ether to Bitcoin is a cross currency pair, which means there's two factors that go into its valuation, the value of Ether and the value of Bitcoin. It's not against the US dollar. It's a derived it's hard to explain, but the easiest way to think about it or the easiest way to understand it is that back in August, right, the value of Bitcoin reached roughly, I believe, 4,500 or so. That was like the max level that it reached back in August. Back then, Ether was trading somewhere between 200 to 400, right? It sort of was in that range throughout that month. I think it went all the way down to like 230 and then it pulled all the way up to 400, came back down. The point is, at that time, Ether was worth way more than 4 million Satoshi, yet now it's all the way up at $700, right? So what's important to realize is that it is very important to look at the Satoshi levels completely separate from the US dollar level. And if you don't understand these at this point, you're making a mistake with your investments because you really, you don't have the tools to measure whether or not you are making the correct decisions and if you're actually generating value or destroying it. So the easiest way to do this is you should compare, let's say you have a thousand dollars and you decide I'm going to split it between some in Bitcoin, some in Ethereum, some in Ripple, some in Litecoin, some in IOTA, some in Monero, and that's it. That's my portfolio, right? You're going to stay with the mega caps. Fine. What you need to do is you need to create mentally or mathematically in Excel a completely separate portfolio that is 100% Bitcoin. In other words, you need to say, all right, instead of spreading my thousand dollars between these different cryptocurrencies I just listed, what if I just put the full thousand dollars into Bitcoin? And you need to compare the two over time. And if you find that the portfolio that's 100% in Bitcoin is performing better, then you actually have underperformed the market, which means you've destroyed value you're a bad investor. That's the reality. And I'm going to give you an example where I've done that because it's not as if it's very common in this particular market, especially where Bitcoin's dominance tends to fluctuate quite a bit. So I'm going to give you an example where I messed this up. And the easiest way I can show you that was a video I did back in October that many of you have probably forgotten about now because I haven't heard anybody complain about it. Very surprising. But if we go back here, you'll actually find a video where I talked about ARK and how it was a strong buy. Now at this point in time, ARK was trading around 60,000 Satoshi. At this point in time, ARK is currently at 27,000 Satoshi. Now when I made this video, ARK was worth $2.55 or somewhere in that ballpark, maybe like $2.60. That's when I recommended to purchase it. Now it's trading at four dollars and I can barely read that but I'm gonna assume it's 43 cents so now it's at four dollars and 43 cents but the Satoshi level is actually half so the dollar level has almost doubled but the Satoshi level has more than halved have I generated alpha or have I destroyed value I've destroyed value with this particular investment in fact it's my worst investment yet since I have started the YouTube channel okay this is the sort of thing where you really have to be very careful of falling into these fallacies where it's very easy to think that, oh, because I'm up $2 per arc, I've definitely created value, but you certainly have not. And if we go back here, this is around the level, this is around the point where I bought into arc, right around here, right at the very beginning of October. So it's very important to look into your investments in terms of Bitcoin levels. You don't have to go based off of Satoshi. That's just the particular unit of Bitcoin that I like to use because it's very intuitive to me. You basically take any of this, you know, after the decimal, you read it off as if there's no decimal at all. And then that's your Satoshi level. Okay. 
So, and you just assume that there's always going to be eight zeros in total, right? So you go all the way up at the maximum here. This is your 10 million, this is your 1 million, so on and so forth, right? So the maximum is 99,999,999 Satoshi, right? If you go up one more Satoshi, that's one full Bitcoin. One Satoshi is one 100 millionth of a Bitcoin. So at the moment, this is at 27,000. 458 Satoshi. That's how you read it. And that's how you should think about your investments. Don't think about it in terms of US dollar terms because you're going to be deceiving yourself as to whether or not you're creating value for yourself or if you just would have been better off fully investing in Bitcoin. And in the case of ARK here, I would have been much, much better off just investing in Bitcoin. I'd have more than double the amount that I currently have in ARK. I've continued to hold it. I'm still bullish on it. I actually still think it's going to recover back to where I'm at or have initially invested, but it is interesting to note that I have destroyed a ton of value over the long term here. That's how you need to evaluate whether or not you've created value or destroyed it. I know a lot of people might be confused by it, but it's very important that you understand it. The other thing that's worth noting here is that when we come to exchanges that aren't fiat on ramps, in other words, they aren't ways where you can deposit the native currency and actually purchase cryptocurrencies, GDAX is a fiat on ramp. In other words, you can purchase Bitcoin using the US dollar, you can purchase Ether using the US dollar, you can purchase Litecoin using the US dollar. But once we get onto Bittrex, you actually can't use the US dollar at all. The closest thing you have is Tether, which, by the way, is for some reason mooning at the moment. It's at a dollar and four cents, which is insane. Anyway, that's aside from the point. Once we get onto Bittrex, you're no longer using dollar levels. They're just there for your convenience. But the majority of buying and selling is actually done in Satoshi levels, meaning that all the support lines, all of the resistance lines, all of the channels, all of the moving averages, everything that anybody is paying attention to is done in Satoshi levels, which means a substantial amount of volume for any cryptocurrency that isn't Bitcoin, and that does include Ether, that does include Litecoin, is done in Satoshi levels. So when I mentioned that 4 million Satoshi is a very key level for Ether, I want to note that that has nothing to do with the US dollar level. Some people were asking me to tell them the equivalent US dollar level. Well, since I made the video yesterday, Bitcoin's down a little bit here, which means that now the value of 4 million Satoshi in US dollar terms is actually lower. That's why I can't give you the equivalent US dollar level because it's deceiving and it changes, it fluctuates based off of the change in price of Bitcoin and the change in price of Ether. So Satoshi is a totally different thing. Okay, the Satoshi levels are a totally different thing. They are how you should measure the value of your investments. If you're not doing it already, please make a portfolio as if you had fully invested in Bitcoin rather than all of the altcoins that you have.